The next two letters that we looked at had, had the problem coming from within, false teachers who are arising from within. So if you look at verse 14, this is to the church in Pergamum. It says, Jesus says, Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You have people there who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin by eating food sacrificed to idols and by committing sexual immorality. And remember, we talked about compromise, how there were these leaders who were from within, who were teaching people to compromise their faith, and so they were starting to eat meat, sacrifice to idols, and engage in sexual immorality. And so there were these false teachers. They were inside the church. And the same thing last week. We talked about compromise Verse 20 to this church in Thyatira, Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. So you see that again. There is this woman, there's this prophetess. She's a false teacher. She's teaching people that, hey, it's okay. We're in Jesus Christ. You can go ahead and, and eat meat, sacrifice to idols. You can engage in sexual immorality because Jesus forgives all our sins. And so there are like real people who are causing these churches to struggle through what they're struggling, whether from outside or whether from inside. Do you see that? Who is the enemy? Who, who is causing this church in Sardis, to fall down? And the answer is, there's nobody. There's no outside enemy. There's no inside heretical teacher. It's just merely their own spiritual malaise and complacency. I want to just have you look at these words. Uh, I mean, they're such sharp words in the middle of verse 1. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive but you are dead. It's like nobody's, nobody's trying to get you to, to be led astray. Nobody's persecuting you from the outside. It's just that you have this reputation for being alive, but the fact of the matter is you're complacent. You, you fall into the spiritual malaise, and when Jesus evaluates you, you're dead. One of the things, if you just start to think about these words, I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you're dead, I would say this, it must be possible that you can have this reputation. Like when other people see you, they say, wow, what a great Christian. That person is really, you know, their relationship with God is so close. You can have that reputation. People look at you and say that. It's possible that you have that from the outside, and yet when Jesus looks at you, he, he sees something different. In fact, the thing about it is, when I, when I thought about this letter, I thought that probably this might be the letter that strikes closest to us. In fact, I have this fear that of all these seven letters, this is the one that might describe us the best. I mean, we really don't have people who are persecuting us that much from the outside, and at least for the most part, we, we've had good teachings here and not had people trying to lead us astray. I, I think, just kind of follow me here, there are millions of people who are attending church all over the world right now today, right? I mean, people who, you know, if you were to look at them from the outside, they're walking into church, they're wearing the right clothes, they're smiling with the right smile, they're coming into church, they're singing the right words, they, they're going through the motions of everything. And you can probably think about what that looks like all around the world. Would you be willing to admit with me that some of them are phonies, fakes, right? I mean, you probably met some of these people before. I like, oh, God bless you, and they've got all these great words to say to you, but their life is phony, right? You'd be willing to admit that there's other churches out there where, where that's a problem, right? Probably there are people who are sitting in this room today that have that same problem. You're faking it. You're a spiritual phony. When you came in, the songs were singing, you were singing the right words. And when people look at you, you have this reputation like, yeah, that's a good Christian person. They're here every Sunday. But, but if Jesus was to, to evaluate your relationship with him, it'd be something quite different. In fact, there's just two questions I thought I'd just ask them to you, and I want you to just think about 
the answers to these questions. What would other people say about your relationship with Jesus? Just think about that. Like people that you know, people in your family, people that are coworkers, people that are friends. If if I was to ask them a question, you know, tell me about their relationship with Jesus. What would other people say about you? Just, just think about it just for a second. Okay, you, you thought of an answer? What, what would people say about... Now, now, what would God say about your relationship with Jesus? Is it the, is it the same? Is there a little bit of difference? If there is, then I would suggest to you that maybe these words have something to say to you. You have a reputation of being alive, but you're dead. I came across this great quote from John Wooden, the famous basketball coach from UCLA. I thought it was great. He said this, Be more concerned with your character than your reputation, because your character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think you are. Yeah, be a lot more concerned with your character than your reputation. Jesus says, listen, you have a reputation of being alive, he says to this church. But the fact of the matter is, you're dead. And um, if these words just even hit home a little bit to you, then what Jesus says next, I think you ought to really pay attention to. Verse 2, wake up. That's what he says, wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Obey it and repent. If you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. There's really five verbs in a row here. They're all, they're all commands. Wake up. I mean, if you found yourself in this sense of just spiritual complacency and malaise, Jesus says this to you, wake up. Just wait, wake up. I mean, this isn't a way to live life. I mean, just think about this. I mean, yeah, okay, it's great. Other people, when they look at you, you have this reputation of being alive. Other people would say you have this great relationship with God. But what does it matter if when you're standing before Jesus... Other people thought you had a great relationship with God, but Jesus said, wow, I never knew you. 